Everyone last year was captured with this idea of the man from the people who seemed to run rings around the experienced elite politicians and the organized parties and to the point where he became indispensable. He really had a model of a successful hands-on pragmatic governance. So it's fairly natural for him to be picked up by the PDIP and eventually the dynastic scion um, Megawati realized she couldn't win and reluctantly gave him the nomination. It's a very young government, four months and a very inexperienced candidate at national level. The second thing we've got to realize is there were really three uh, figures in the election, the two candidates and in the back seat of Jokowi, Megawati, still chairwoman of the party that backed him. She still thinks that Jokowi owes her everything. And, and the other unfortunate, the third, is that despite his personal popularity, parties belonging to the Jakarta elite control the majority of the DPR, the parliament. But there are some significant runs on the board already. On the positive side, within his first month, he grasped the huge nettle of the subsidies for petrol. This has been chewing up about $20 billion of the budget, growing inexorably as Indonesia's export dependency grew. In his first month, he cut the subsidy by about half. Then there was the handling of the Air Asia crash in Surabaya. It was handled reasonably competently in a technical sense and very humanely in terms of dealing with the families of the victims. But then in January, we had the return of the backseat driver, Megawati. She, I believe, put forward one of her favourites to be the new national police chief. The immensely popular anti-corruption agency known as the KPK announced that he was a graft suspect. And this, from January, has set off a struggle that has tarnished Jokowi's presidency and still might fatally undermine it. Two days later, Jokowi withdrew the nomination of this police general and appointed to stand in figures to head the corruption agency. That has not ended this brouhaha. Possibly Jokowi has a deeper game in here, but he's looked like he's delayed and dithered. He's also given his approval to a very dodgy car scheme, a car manufacturing scheme involving the former Malaysian Prime Minister and another of Megawati's favourites, a uh, very um, suspect former intelligence general called Hendra Piona. Now, it was against this background that this sudden rush to execute drug convicts happened.